will be removed. What? No. Aniston, are you still there? Hmm? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Aniston? I'm still here. Okay. I don't know. It told me that you yeah. might. Can you hear me? Yep. I can hear you. All right. Good. We're going to, I'm going to hit start streaming and we're going to see a little button's going to come up in the corner that says live. And then Ms. Arnold will do our welcome. <laughs> All right. Hello, fifth grade. Um, welcome to our live Google meet. Um, it's our virtual field trip to Emory University's Office of Spiritual and Religious Life. You know that this whole year we've been studying the three Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And before we transition to virtual learning, we're going to take a trip to Emory. Um, and you guys prepared some awesome questions for um, the students at Emory. And so we have three of your classmates are here with us, Ashton, Eloise, and Aniston, and three students from Emory's um, Interreligious Council, Xavier, well, hopefully Xavier shows up but Noah and Catherine are here. Um, and we're gonna have a great conversation today about what it means to live as part of a faith community and how our faith affects our daily life and what we can learn from people who have different religions than us. So we're gonna begin and I'm gonna introduce you to Miss Lisa Garvin. She is one of the leaders at Emory of their Interreligious Council. And then we'll do some introductions and get started. So Miss Garvin, go ahead. Good morning. Good morning, y'all. It's nice to be with y'all, and I'm really sorry that we're not in Cannon Chapel as we had originally planned. Um, I wish that I had it uh, on another platform. I can put a backdrop of it, but I can't. I don't know how to do that here. So, um, but I uh, just wanted to say a couple of quick things um, to the eleventh fifth graders, and then I'll uh, will introduce our Emory students. But first, I want to thank y'all for your great questions. Um, Y'all's questions are really wonderful, and I'm really looking forward um, to this conversation um, and all that we'll learn together. Um, and then I also want to say a little bit about uh, the Interreligious Council at Emory is um, a group of about 30 undergraduate students um, at Emory College, and they represent five different religious traditions. And the folks that are with us today um, represent the traditions that you all have been learning about. Um, um, Christianity and Islam. Uh, Xavier's not with us right now. And y'all probably know that we're in the middle of Ramadan. So I'm going to guess that he got up really early to pray and to eat and is now taking a nap <laughs> before he has to pray again and fast. And I think he'll join us. But one of um, the ways that we think about conversation between people from different religious traditions is that we each only speak for ourselves as a person who is committed to that tradition. Um, and that that doesn't mean that everybody who follows our tradition um, would say the same thing. So I just want y'all to keep that in mind that each of us will be speaking for ourselves as um, a person of our particular religious tradition and that will tell you something about our traditions, but not everything about each tradition. So thank you, Ms. Arnold, for this opportunity for us to be with y'all. Yes, I am so glad that we are here. Um, I don't know what just happened. Aniston got kicked off. So I'm trying to sort that out. But while I do that, um, Eloise and Ashton, could you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves and just Share out your name, um, what faith you identify with, where you worship, and what you're excited about today. Hi, I'm Eloise. My family is Jewish, and we attend the temple. Um, I'm glad to be here today because I want to learn more about like different religions. Um, hi, my name is Ashton, and um, my family is Christian, and we attend Ebenezer Baptist Church. Um, I am very excited to participate in this conversation today because I want to learn more about the three Abrahamic religions. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, and how about our Emory students? Um, Noah and Catherine, can you tell us um, your name, what faith you identify with, and why you follow your faith? 
absolutely. <laughs> you can go I first, go Noah. Uh, yeah. My name is Noah Lee. I'm from Los Angeles, where I am currently, and I am Jewish. I go to a place called Temple Beth Am, um, and I feel like I am so proud to be Jewish because it has a rich history, and um, it really aligns me with my family. Uh, I have this large network of people all across the world who who stay in touch, and um, in large part, we relate over Jewish milestone events. We come together every once in a while to celebrate weddings and bar mitzvahs, as we'll get into later. And uh, I feel like it's a really dynamic and rich way to walk through the world. Um, yeah, and going off of that, um, I'm Catherine. I am Seventh-day Adventist Christian, and I follow my faith um, at least at first, because both of my parents um, identify with that faith. And I think also I really just like how my um, faith studies the Bible and a lot of the, the traditions and um, culture we kind of have around that. So I really like reading um, and just understanding why things are the way they are. And I feel like my faith for me answers those questions. Thank you, Catherine. And just for um, our kids who might not know, um, Seventh-day Adventist is a branch of Christianity. So we talked about how there's lots of different branches. And so thank you. Um, I'm sure we'll hear more about that later. Aniston, we missed you, hon. Can you um, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit like your name, um, your faith tradition and where you go or don't go to church and um, what you're excited about today? So hi, I'm Aniston. My family is kind of Christian. We are Christian but we just don't really go to church yet. And I'm still learning about my tradition. And I'm really looking forward to our talk today because I want to learn more about how we are all different but interconnected through our faiths. Thanks, Aniston. Um, Eloise, can you get us started? Yes. Thanks so much for being here today with us, Savior, Noah, and Catherine. You're all part of the Interreligious Council, also known as the IRC at Emory University. From what I understand, this is a community of college students from different faiths who gathered together to discuss important things in world events. To begin our conversation, can you tell us a little bit more about the IRC and why being in a multi-religious community is important to you? Um, do you want to go first, Noah, or do you want me to go first? Uh, if you, you can, you could take this one. Okay. Um, yeah. So I have only been on IRC for like the past few months. So I'm actually one of the newer members. Um, but I think it's just really cool because every week we would get together and kind of we have dinner and we are all from different faith traditions and we just kind of discuss, you know, um, how our faith impacts how we perceive the world and there's no right or wrong answers to anything. And I really enjoyed it because I think even though in being surrounded by people who don't like believe the same as you, it helps you kind of question what you believe. And it really helps you kind of reinforce, you know, where you came from and you know what you think and what you believe and what others believe. So does that kind of answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so the IRC sounds really cool. Thanks for telling us about it. We're now going to ask you some I know, I wonder questions written by our fifth grade classmates. Our first question is about Judaism and for you, Noah. We learned that bar and bat mitzvahs are important celebrations for 13 year olds. Is there another similar celebration for people who convert to Judaism after they're 13? What would you do at each kind of celebration? Well, thank you so much for your questions. And as we've been saying all day, um, it just really warmed my heart to, to read these questions. Um, they're really thoughtful. Um, so I'll say like a truth and a misconception about a, a bar mitzvah. The truth about them is that we love to celebrate their big festive parties. Um, but the misconception is that the bar mitzvah isn't actually the party itself. It's the kind of acknowledgement of this coming of age. It's when you turn 13 years old, you're going to accept your role as a Jewish person. So 
related to someone who converts, that's a really interesting, you know, question because they don't necessarily have that ceremony at the age of 13 because presumably when they were 13, they weren't, you know, becoming Jewish yet. So there definitely is a celebration and a, and a festive meal and, and dancing uh, at a ceremony where someone converts. Um, and in some spaces, they, they choose to call that a bar mitzvah, but it's kind of a little different than becoming a bar mitzvah. So, so someone who's, who has a child after they've converted, they will have a, a bar mitzvah for sure, but there's no formal official ceremony to celebrate uh, or there's no name for the official ceremony that celebrates someone's conversion, um, which is interesting, right? If you want to become Jewish, shouldn't there be some kind of incentive for you to want to have like, oh, let's let's have a party after after I convert? Um, but it's not necessarily like that. And it's a little, you know, there isn't anything standard. So maybe there should be. That's a that's a great thought. That's all. Um, Barn Bot Mitzvahs must be great parts. Our classmate Fanny Bradley has a question about celebrations in Islam for you, Xavier. She says, I know Jews and Christians have ceremonies of commitment to their faith like Bar and Bat Mitzvahs and baptisms. When and how do Muslim people commit to their faith? Hi, thank you so much for your question. Um, it's really wonderful to be with you all this morning. Um, and so we did a little introduction. So if you want to introduce yourself and just say, and when you answer this question, if you want to just say also like your name, um, where you worship and why you follow your faith, like you can feel free to add that into your response. Great. Thank you so much. Um, and so I was uh, a little late this morning. I was having some technological problems. Um, but my name is Xavier Saeed. Um, I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, and <laughs> and I am a Muslim. Um, I follow my faith. Um, first, you know, first of all, I, I was raised as a Muslim. Um, and but I think for me, I follow my faith um, because it it um, in my exploration of my faith, it has a connection to rationality and science and logic um, that really resonates with me. Um, and and it is really rooted in a really um, intimate relationship with God. And, and I feel um, enriched by my faith and like, and it, like, that it allows me to, uh, to be a part of my community in a way um, that I feel is grounded in morality and kindness and generosity and mercy. Um, so those are some of the reasons I follow my faith. Um, and then I'll get to the question. Um, so in Islam, there is no, there aren't, aren't really, there isn't really a, a ceremony or, or um, a celebration that no. that um, marks someone's entrance into the faith, like a bar mitzvah or a baptism. Um, in Islam, it's 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 actually a pretty simple thing that makes you a Muslim. Um, and so when somebody converts to Islam, um, what what they do is they take their shahada. Um, now, shahada means um, their testimony, and it's a very simple statement. Um, and I'll say it in Arabic, and then I'll say it in English, and then I'll I'll explain it a little bit. So the statement in Arabic is la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, and it means I believe that there's no god but God, and that Muhammad is a prophet. Um, and in order in in order to be a Muslim, um, that is what you have to believe. Um, so when people say that, and believe that with their entire heart, that marks their entrance into the faith of Islam. And that's um, all from me, thank you. This brings up an interesting thought. I'm Jewish and I know that someone can be born Jewish if their mother is Jewish. Our classmate Chase has a question about Christianity for you, Catherine. She says, I know there are many ways to enter a faith can someone be Christian by blood or is there a certain belief or action to be required to be a Christian? Yeah, that's um, a really great question. And I'm not sure there's a very like straightforward answer to it, unfortunately. Um, I do think family um, has a significant impact on the type of religion 
um, that you grow up in. Um, like I said earlier, both of my parents are um, Seventh-day Adventist Christian. And again, Seventh-day Adventism is a branch of Christianity. There's a whole bunch of branches, right? Like maybe Baptist or Presbyterian or Methodist, there's all kinds. Um, I like to think of religion, at least from my perspective. And again, this is just my view as, you know, kind of like sports. Like, do any of you guys play sports or like an instrument or anything like that? Um, you know, if I'm, I'm a runner personally, and it's like, if I can be born into a family of runners, but I still have to kind of practice or do something to be like better at it. So in my mind, you know, I think you can be like born into Christianity, but a big part of it is forming a relationship with God. And that's an active process. And that's something you've got to do, uh, whether that be through prayer or going to church or whatever works for you. Um, I know within a bunch of different um, branches, they all kind of treat baptism a little differently, but I know a lot of, um, a lot of branches, especially mine, um, when a person wants to become Christian, they'll say, oh, hey, like, I would like to get baptized into this church. I know it's a little different for like Catholicism, so I'm not speaking for all Christians, um, but you can say, you know, I want to be baptized. And then you go through this whole thing and you kind of profess that, you know, you believe uh, Jesus is um, God's son and you kind of get dunked under the water. And that's symbolic of washing, um, I guess, your sins away and also just being kind of converted into the faith. So it, it it's a lot of different things. It's a, the belief and it's also sometimes an action, but that doesn't mean that you're just a Christian simply because you got baptized. Like it's also forming that relationship with God. And yeah, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there. It's really interesting to think about how these three faiths have something in common and something's different. Our friend Casey, who has also been thinking about the similarities and differences between the traditions, and she has a question about Christianity, Catherine. Casey says, I know Jews and Muslims have food restrictions. Is there a food Christians can't eat? Yeah, so another great question. Um, and again, not a straightforward answer. Um, in my particular branch of Christianity, which again is some of the Adventism, um, we do follow um, the dietary laws outlined in the book of Leviticus. And that um, kind of differentiates between like clean and unclean meat. So an unclean meat um, that you might hear a lot of is like pork, like we don't eat pork. Um, However, I know a lot of other branches don't necessarily make that differentiation. So some Christians don't necessarily differentiate between clean and unclean. And again, it depends on how you interpret um, different texts of the Bible. So like, you know, have, you guys may have heard of like the story of Noah and the flood. Um, if you see like, if you actually go back and read it, like Noah's taking, he takes, he's told to take I think seven of the clean animals and like two of like the un, every unclean. So there's a lot of differentiation between clean and unclean in the Old Testament, uh, which is like the first half of the Bible. And then when you get to the New Testament, um, there's a lot of um, debate and depends on the different kind of branch of Christianity that you belong to on whether those rules are still in effect with respect to clean and unclean meats. So yeah, just to answer your question, it really depends on the uh, branch of Christianity. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. Eloise, can some Xavier yeah. got kicked off? Oh, Aniston, it looks like Xavier got kicked off. So we're going to skip that question and we're going to move to Eloise. Can you take us into our last question? Yeah. Um, in this part? As we prepare to move into our faith and life questions, I'd like to include a personal question Fiona asked about Judaism. It helps us consider the real world consequences of how we relate to people of different faiths. Noah, our friend Fiona, now says, I know Jews have often been picked on throughout history. How does this continue to affect you? Um, Fiona, I, I really appreciate your sensitivity. Like even from the initial list of questions, this one stood out as, wow, this is like some serious business that we're talking about here. Um, and there are a lot of people around the world, Jews, Muslims, and Christians alike, who continue to suffer today from religious persecution if they're different from the people that 
they're surrounded by. So on one hand, um, I'm very lucky that in Los Angeles and in Atlanta, I feel extremely comfortable to wear my kippah and to walk around proudly identifying in Jewish, you know, in Jewish community and in Jewish uh, clothing. And, you know, I, I really am, am pretty fearless in, in those places. Uh, however, I recognize that around the world, I couldn't always wear a kippah. There are some places uh, that are, that are, it's very dangerous um, to be Jewish. And, and there are hate crimes that continue to go on. Um, you know, in, in Europe, in some places, in New York, there, the, you know, Jewish uh, the rates of hate crimes against Jews and, and other peoples alike are, are rampant. And, and that's a really scary thought. So yes, uh, it's something to be aware of and that we should all be sensitive of, of the sufferings of, of different peoples alike. And also it's amazing that I'm allowed to like walk through this world and be comfortable in my skin and, and not face persecution on a daily basis in my home and in my college community. Um, now we will move into some faith and life and other discussion questions. Anyone can answer these questions and we hope it can be more of a little conversation where we can find some sim similarities, differences and wonderings about each other. The first question comes from Clay. He asks, do you ever feel down on yourself because of your religion? Why? Do one of you guys want to go first, um, Noah or Xavier, or do you want me to go first? I can, I can start. Um, I don't ever really feel down on myself necessarily, but sometimes it can be really hard to, to be a practicing Jew. There are a lot of holidays that uh, I choose to observe, and often those can conflict with the schedules of my friends and family or with school. So, and Catherine knows as well, you know, I mean, Saturdays and Friday nights, I'm pretty much off the grid. I don't use any technology and intermittently throughout the year as well. Um, like, for example, we just had Passover and upcoming, we have a holiday called Shavuot, which celebrates the Jews reception of, of our Torah, our holy book on Mount Sinai, and which is, a, you know, a story in, in the Bible as well. And, and for that holiday, Two days I'm spending off of technology, especially during coronavirus, that can be really, really difficult and put a strain on relationships that rely on technology. Um, so I'm never really down on myself, but I recognize that it can be a burden sometimes. Um, just to kind of continue off of that, because I know we're looking for um, similarities, um, both the Jewish tradition and the specifically the Seventh-day Adventist branch of Christianity, we celebrate the Sabbath, as you may have um, realized. So from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset is like our day of rest. And um, kind of like Noah was saying, it can be a lot of um, like scheduling conflicts. Like I remember growing up, like my best friend would always have their birthday parties on like Saturday and I couldn't go or I ran track in high school and there would be like a big meet and big tournament and I couldn't go to it. Um, and again, this is just my branch. It's not all um, Christians. I think talking about um, the Christian faith as a whole, you know, we believe a lot in the teachings of Jesus. And, um, you know, they, he, teach, he teaches a lot about how we should treat other people, um, you know, like, you know, doing on to others as you would have them do on to you, or um, just kind of loving your neighbor as yourself. And sometimes I feel like I don't take that as seriously as I should. So I might be kind of mean to someone or I might come off as mean and I'll come home and I'll be like, you know, like this isn't really how Christ would act and this isn't how I would, he would want me to act. So I think if I ever get down on myself, it's kind of in that respect, but I've never felt like ashamed or anything of my actual religion. Um, yeah, just going off of what Catherine was saying, um, I really resonated with, uh, with what she said about, about, um, Kind of reflecting on the actions of the prophets so um if you know in islam uh, there are uh, we believe in the prophet muhammad peace be upon him but also all of the prophets of the bible who came um, before muhammad such as noah moses abraham um and then also 
in um, G- uh, Jesus is a prophet in Islam. So um, I think the the times where I kind of get down on myself are when I'm reflecting on my actions and and how I behave as a person. And I'm thinking about just how wonderful um, in action and character and wisdom those prophets are. Um, and sometimes I get, I get kind of upset and I, I really yearn to be that, you know, that kind of per, uh, um, a better person. And, and so um, I, I, I think sometimes that causes me some, um, some, I like, I get upset about that, but I also think it's a blessing that I am striving towards that. And I think, um, yeah, I, so I agree with Catherine that, that sometimes that can be the source of, 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 of kind of grief in a way, but um, I'm never ashamed of my religion itself. I'm really proud of uh, to be a Muslim uh, and I really love my religion. Thank you for your question. Go ahead, Aniston. Um, It says that any student can answer as well. Can I also answer? Yeah, please. Um, so since I don't really go to church yet, like my family tried out church, but I didn't know they were going to do that. And I was at a sleepover when they tried it out. And so I got, I'm, so every night I try and pray before I go to bed, but I get kind of down myself sometimes too, because I feel like sometimes if I don't go to church, I feel like I might not get connected to God and it might not be best for me and my religion if I don't do that. So sometimes I feel the doubt of myself when I don't, because I don't go to church yet. And because sometimes I can't pray at night because I go to bed really late or something. Thanks for sharing with us, Anna. And that took a lot of memory. I know you weren't necessarily prepared to, I didn't require that you guys share about that. So I'm really proud of you right now. Um, Eloise or Ashton, do you want to answer or you want um, Aniston to take us to our question? Um, um, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Anderson. Oh, sorry, Eloise. I'm okay. okay. So that was a really great conversation. Our next faith in life question is, do you ever want to celebrate holidays from other faiths? Do you, why or why not? So Lisa has taught me uh, this concept called holy envy, um, which is, you know, a philosophical, you know, it's definitely a scholarly concept that has been discussed throughout religious academics. But um, it's this notion that, you know, I, as a Jewish person who am very proud to be Jewish, also recognize the greatness of what you're doing as, say, a Muslim person. Um and for me, I'm a very disciplined person. And, and while I recognize that it's extremely difficult, uh, I'll just say my holy envy is for Ramadan, which is for what Xavier's doing right now. For an entire month, he's, it's, it's like Lent to some extent, um, but you know, to the nth degree, he's fasting for, for during the day for an entire month and praying and devoting himself to his Quran studies. And it seems like, wow, for a month you can really ultra align yourself with your faith. That is so cool. Uh, and hats off to you and I hope that's going well. <laughs> Thank you, Noah. <laughs> um, and, and so since, I, uh, since Islam was mentioned, I'll just go next. Um, I, I definitely have uh, experienced my fair share of holy envy. Um, I, I think the way that I view Myself as a, I, I have my religious community, which is made up of other Muslims, um, and then I I have my spiritual community, which is made up of um, people of all faiths and and who connect to God and who want to talk about their um, their connection with God and build that. So um, I've experienced that with Christian people and Jewish people and people um, who may, may maybe don't even. Um, like ascribe to a particular religion, but who just really want to talk about um, faith and spirituality and God. Um, and so there are, you know, sometimes that um, 
in connecting with those people, I get a chance to see uh, some of their some of their religious practices. Um, and so, you know, I, I have a little bit of holy envy for uh, the Sabbath and for Shabbat um, on the weekends, just taking that day of rest and um, and having just that one time every week to kind of reconnect. Um, and I think, I think there's a lot that I have learned from my friends of other faiths. And so, um, I really enjoy trying to take maybe the principle at the, at the root of, um, some of those practices or holidays and, and really trying to, um, absorb those and, and to try to bring those into my own life and my own faith in the, in the way that I connect with God. Um, yeah, going off of that, um, I guess I might, might be cheating a little bit, but I would definitely say um, Sabbath because I already kind of celebrate it. Um, but of course, um, as Noah mentioned earlier, that's also in like the Jewish um, religion as well. And it's really cool just to be able to take a day off or have like a mini holiday like every week and be like, oh, I, I like I can't do homework today. Like this is nice. And it's it's it was it's nice, but it's also nice to um it's needed because I'm not just like laying around during that time. I'm like studying my Bible or I'm going to church or doing something to further my connection with God. Um in terms of the Islam tradition, I I am also I'm gonna agree with no on that one too. I, I'm very um in awe that you guys can fast and again fasting is like not eating for, you know, such an extended period of time. And I know like fasting and praying is a really, you know, meaningful way to feel closer to God. And I do fast sometimes, probably not to the extent that you all do with Ramadan. Um, but I know like, I, even within my family, we'll do different kinds of fasts. And it's not like as a family thing, it's usually like a personal thing when you're like looking for guidance from that. So I know my mom, she really likes like cookies and chocolate and stuff. So she'll go on like a dessert fast. So she just like won't eat dessert for like a week and the only way we'll tell is that like the cookies aren't disappearing You're like what's going on and she's like yeah I'm fasting like I'm paying to God um for like guidance on like a new job or something um and I also have gone on like full fasts where I'm just like not eating for most of the day and praying so yeah definitely Ramadan and Sabbath would be my uh, top two <laughs> thank you for your questions um, let's actually jump to Ashley's question just because I'm not sure how much time we're going to have. And I think the last two questions are really great. So Ashton, can you go ahead and ask your next question, bud? Thanks for sharing your thoughts. Here's another question for us. To what is something you wish people knew about your faith? One of you guys want to go first? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, wow. So clearly, like all of these faiths have multiple different elements, right? And I find that the most compelling element of my faith or the one that kind of sits with me deeply in my soul or so to speak is um that it's on the basis of telling stories and and the jewish people love to tell stories uh about our culture or about our history or you know about friends or just about like modern times and 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 I think that is pretty much at the core of, of what, what I'm doing in this world as a Jewish person. And the way that I think that traditions get passed is also through stories. Like, for example, we have our, our Torah, our Old Testament, our Bible. And then we have this whole other set of laws and ideas that have been transmitted throughout time just by on the basis of telling stories. And now we have that written down. It's called the oral Torah. But I think that's so cool that you're able to maintain uh, a text that wasn't written down, that's just transmitted through word of mouth. 
Uh, and so to me, that's extremely powerful. And that's like the core of all of this. Um, for me, I guess it would be, I was asking someone else to go first because I was like thinking about this question since yesterday and I was like, what would I want people to know? Um, I think a big thing for me is that my religion is like part of my lifestyle. Um, and I think, I don't know, I think it's, it's important because it made me realize how I look at things and how much my religion influences how I looked at things. So it influences, you know, like we have a separate, we call it the health message, um, but we like focus on like the health aspect in my particular branch of Christianity um, on like how to stay healthy. Um, and I think that's really interesting. And I think also just with any faith that it's still important to keep an open mind when understanding another faith, I guess. Um, it's really easy to meet one person and be like, oh, I know everything there is to know about this tradition because I've met like this one like person from Judaism or this one person from Islam. And it's not true. Like it's, it's still, even though we share so many things between faiths, it's still a very personal experience. So it's important to keep an open mind with any religion, um, you know, and even within mine. So yeah, that, that's gonna be my answer. <laughs> Um, I think for me, there are kind of two different um, things that I would want people to know. Uh, the first the first is a little bit more basic. I'm not sure if everybody understands that um, just in the in the world at large that Islam is not um, uh, it, it doesn't it's a continuation of um, kind of the the books that that came out of Judaism and, and Christianity. So in Islam, there are five holy books. Um, which are the the scrolls of Abraham, um, and there are not any copies of those. Uh, the Torah of Moses, the Psalms of David, the Gospel of Jesus, and then the Quran. Um, now there are some kind of details about the particulars of those books that um, that I won't go into, but but just understanding that, that Islam um, in the Quran com they comment on um, the stories that are brought up in the Bible. Um, and they, they talk about, the Quran talks about Jesus. The Quran talks about, um, actually, uh, in the Quran, Muhammad, which, uh, peace be upon him is, is mentioned four times. Um, and Jesus is mentioned 25 times. And every time Jesus is mentioned, um, his, Mary is mentioned, um, and, you know, Abraham and Moses are mentioned hundreds of times. So it's, uh, I think just, I, w I wish more people had more basic knowledge. Um, but on a, on another level, I, I w wish that people understood that Islam is a religion um, that really focuses on the mercy of God um, and embodying that in how you interact with people. Um, so uh, every chapter in the Quran, except for one, starts with Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, which means in the name of God, the most merciful, the especially merciful. Um, and actually the word um, that it uses for mercy uh, has has a connection to the word for womb, um, and so it's talking about kind of a, a motherly a motherly love and an all encompassing love. And and you know when you do something maybe you shouldn't do, um, and uh, and your mom you know your mom will still love you through that <laughs> and and understands um, that you just made a mistake. And so that's kind of um, the, like one of the one of the types of love that God has for us, the um, that compassionate, uh, all encompassing love, and um, I don't think I don't think a lot of people know what a tremendous role that plays in the in this Islamic faith. Um, but it, a lot of times um, in the in the text of of the Quran, it'll say, "Now here, you know, if if somebody, uh, you know." it'll it'll be talking about a rule it'll say you know if this happens then you're you know entitled to this like um if you hurt somebody then they should have to pay you right like uh, this is a hypothetical um if if you're somebody then they should have to pay you but if you forgive them and just let it go that's better for you you know in the name of god if you you know forgive them 
then that's better for you. So it's, it's really focused on forgiveness and mercy. Um, I know there were some questions about, uh, for example, praying and Hajj, um, which I didn't, I, I've been having technological problems and didn't get to answer from you. Um, but I think what's important to remember with, with those things is that God is ultimately merciful and he understands um everything that's going on in, in your life, the things that you feel like you can't explain to other people. Like I couldn't do this because I was overwhelmed and I had this problem and this was going on. Uh, you know, God doesn't need that explanation. He knows. And is and the prayers are for you to um, kind of center yourself and to have, I mean, um, kind of five times a day that are set out for you to connect with God um, and for you to let everything else go. Um, and so the prayers are for you and, and not really for God, <laughs> God doesn't benefit from your prayer. You do. Um, and so if, uh, and there is kind of a mercy built into the structure of the prayer. So for example, we wake up before the sun rises and we pray and then, um, and then the next prayer is not until the afternoon. So maybe at 6am we pray and then we don't pray again until one, um, one and that's that's um, because you know what are you doing between the morning and one forty five? Maybe you're, you know, you're conducting your business, you're going to school, um, and so that the you know the understanding of how we conduct our days within society is built into the structure of the prayers. Um, and then if if something happens and you're not able to to make one, it's okay. Just uh, you know, the next time you have a chance, just make it up. Um, so. Thank you, Xavier, for touching on those questions. Yeah, we missed you when it was your turn. You um, <laughs> jumped off. Do you want to say, we have just like one more minute, but do you want to say anything else about, um, I know the questions were like, what happens if someone dies before they get to go to Hajj? Um, you talked a little bit about the prayer there, and then we'll close out and say goodbye. Um, sure, I can touch on that question really quickly. Um, and, and like I was saying um, with, with Hajj, um, and if somebody were to um, pass away before they got to go, um, that ultimately God is is merciful. So um, your the intent, you know, the intention is that sometime before the end of my life, I will go. Um, and kind of built into that mercy, um, there is there are stipulations if someone is uh, not able to afford to go um, and, and complete their pilgrimage. Um, and so if someone were, someone were to pass away before they got to go, uh, God ultimately understands um, that their intention for their life was was that they they would go eventually, and that um, you know, and and it's ultimately up to God um, when somebody leaves the earth, and 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 so there is you know God God's understanding in that in that situation, um, and and it's important to I think. Um, sometimes when we talk about, okay, Muslims have to do this and this, they have to pray and they have to go to Hajj, um, it can sometimes feel like check boxes, <laughs> but kind of behind that, um, and the, and, and the most important thing is to have good intentions in doing those things and planning to do those things and good intentions, um, and a strong connection with God. Um, and so, uh, kind of like I was saying earlier, God is able to understand all of those things. Um, like if we don't turn in our homework, uh, you know, on the day that we're supposed to, we might go to our teacher and say, Hey, I'm sorry. My, you know, my, my parents were out really late and they took me to the mall and, and like we're shopping for sheets and I, you know, like I wasn't able to be home to do my homework and I'm really sorry. Um, and, and just kind of explain your situation. Um, but God, uh, God understands your situation in a di way, different way than is possible um, by even ourselves and any other person. So um, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> and thank you again That's for great. asking it. Yeah, thank you so much. Eloise, do you want to close us out, hon? Yeah. Thank you for everyone for participating in this conversation. <clears throat> it's been really great to meet you, Xavier, Catherine, and Noah. From me and all my classmates, we really appreciate you spending time this time with us and sh sharing with us. It has been such a gift. I hope we can meet some in person sometime. Thank you all so much. Thank you.
Yes, thank you. I'll say um, I'm going to stop streaming. So thank you all fifth graders for tuning in. We loved having you here. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks everybody you. here. Have a great summer, y'all. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, bye.